My name's Summer and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be going over some back bend, some really common ones that you will find in class. In the world today, we spend a lot of time sitting, hunched forward, and these back bends will begin to unwind some of that forward motion. They feel great, but they do tend to be a very huge emotional release for a lot of people. Make sure that you haven't eaten anything within like the past two hours. You don't want to upset your stomach. You start compressing it, make you feel a little sick. So whenever you're ready, grab a mat, grab your towel, some blocks, anything you may need for this class and let's get to it. So as always, we start the class with warming up our bodies. We want to open up the areas that we will be using a lot, especially with back bends. We want to open up the front areas. We want to loosen up the quads, the hip flexors, uh, the abdominals, and the shoulders. A lot of back bends, they call it back bends, but it's not so much about bending your back and as much as it is opening up the front body. So best way to warm up is always sun salutations. It's very common gets a lot of the foundational poses in that you will need and it helps strengthen the shoulders it helps strengthen those quads it'll start opening up the front body so that you can get into these deeper back bends so let's get ready to the front of our mat so feet together or slightly apart and just kind of root down to the ground Hands at your side, shoulders back. And just kind of feel where you are right there. Is are your feet even? Try to find some even distribution in your feet. Take a few deep breaths here. With an inhale, raise your arms up. Stay right here. With an inhale, lift through the chest and expand. Inhale and expand. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half up. Exhale, plant your hands. Step back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale. Urva Mukha Svanasana. Inhale. And keep pushing. Lengthening your back before creating depth. And exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a few deep breaths here. Pull up on those quads. When you get into some of those deeper back bends, like your wheels, this pose right here is what you need to start strengthening those shoulders. On your next inhale, step your feet to your hands. And half up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweep your hands up. Inhale, pull back a little more and exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, sweep your hands up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half up. On your exhale, step your right foot back. Lunge. 
sweep your hands up. If you can't sweep your hands up, just steady yourself right here. You want to open up those hip flexors. If you do have your hands up, inhale and find some length in your spine. On your next exhale, plant your hands. Step your left foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, finding length, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step your left foot between your hands, lower the right knee, low lunge. Situate yourself here. You can stay right here. Keep opening up that hip flexor. Inhale. Bring your right foot back up, half up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, sweep your hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half up. Exhale. Now step that left foot back. Lower the knee. Situate yourself here. For a little lunge. You want to open this up. A lot of times people can't get into the back bend because there's a lot of tightness in the hip flexors. Sweep your hands up if your body allows it. With every inhale, lengthening. And your exhale, plant your hands. Step your right foot back. Down for Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. As you move through back bends, You'll notice that sometimes they come with a lot of emotions. Just remember to keep coming back to your breath to work through it. Deep cleansing breath. Good. Step your right foot forward. Lower that left knee. Inhale, sweep your hands up if it allows. Or situate yourself if you feel a little wobbly. Notice how things change, how your balance changes depending on where you place your ice. 
exhale, plant your hands, step back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Step up to your feet, hands. Your feet, inhale. Clap back. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, ground to the ground. Sweep your hands up. Exhale, Tadasana. Sometimes during back bends, people feel this pain in their wrists. And a lot of times it's because they don't stretch their wrists out before starting their practice. Or maybe they have a little bit of weakness. Another big thing that happens sometimes is instead of using their entire hand, maybe you could just test this out real quick. Instead of using your entire hand, people dump the weight into their wrist so the fingers are floating and when you do this you're causing a lot of stress you're putting a lot of pressure in the wrist but when you press through your whole hand and grip the mat you're distributing the weight evenly throughout your hand and that gives you for longer lasting wheels less pain in the wrist so today we're going to just sit an easy pose and we're going to stretch out warm up our wrists so easy way create fist and just roll them out just roll them out one way and you feel like you've done 10 then roll them the other way doing this as long as you need to to just feel that ease in your wrist you can also hold your wrist open your hand it creates some space in between those little bones while you create that movement make sure you do the other wrist stretch them out open your hand put it out like I don't know you're about to receive something and with your other hand press on your fingers put some pressure down and you'll start feeling a stretch throughout your wrist area now if you want to strengthen the wrist as you press down, push up. So you're going to push up with the hand that you're stretching against this other hand. And you'll start creating some strength in this wrist area. So the other hand, you're gonna stretch it out. Remember to add some strength component to it. Oh. Another way to create some strength in your forearms because as you're pressing through the ground, you're going to start feeling your forearms really firing up. So easily done. Say, I say easy, but you'll start feeling it in, as soon as you start doing it. Put your hands straight out, and then you're just gonna open it rapidly. Like you're flicking water away. And just keep flicking, flicking, flicking. And you'll start noticing your forearms burn. They will burn. Roll 
up those wrists. So we also want to open up the shoulders. Tight shoulders are a huge reason why a lot of people can't push up into wheel or do a lot of different things in these um, back bends. So easy way to start opening up shoulders is puppy, puppy pose. So you're going to be, you could be on your, like a, on your toes like this, or you could be on your feet flat like this. But pretty much from this position, you're gonna, you're gonna end up putting your chest to the ground if you can. You're gonna just reach forward. If you want a deeper stretch, look up. If you cannot do that yet, you can look down. It's almost like Balasana. You'll start feeling it in your upper upper back right here and when it comes to back bends that is where you want the bend to be happening more you don't want to dump all the weight all the bend into your lower spine right here you want this to start opening up as well and you can also take that same position and against the wall so if you have, if you aren't feeling the whole floor situation, like maybe it's too much, you can also take that and do the same thing on a wall. You can also be standing to do that. You also have the option to use a block just use whatever props you need to allow your body to open up you just use whatever you have at home some people use chairs you can use a chair hold on to it but if you're using a chair you got to be very careful that it's not going to tip over um, there's also these shoulder opening poses where you would reach up with for example one hand would go up to the sky bend behind your neck and then your let's say your right hand up bend that arm left hand left arm will bend and try to reach for the right behind you and this will start opening up this part of your shoulder and then it will open up this right here Now, if that's not available to you, you can always use a strap. So you just hold on to the strap. So hold on to the strap, bring it over, and take the other side of the strap with the opposite hand and feel the stretch. And make sure you do the other side as well. So bring up, bend. And make sure you do what you can. If you need a strap, that's okay. So now that we got our hip flexor stretched out a bit, our wrist stretched out, our shoulders. Sh so now that we got a little bit warmed up and stretched out, let's get right to it. 
So we will be working on Setu Banda Sarvangasana first. So this pose is kind of like a foundational pose for a lot of the back bends. It does help you start feeling what it's like to be upside down a little bit because if you think about it, a lot of these back bends are in part inversions. It is said to alleviate stress and some sad feelings. So if it does work for you, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you feel after doing this pose. So let's get to our mat. We're gonna start in a prone position, which is on our backs. And just kind of feel your space right there, how you're laying down, make sure you're comfortable. Now, for this pose, you're going to bend your knees and then you want your fingers to just be grazing your heels. So then you're going to have an alignment of heel to knee right here. Now, before getting into it, you're going to adjust your shoulders you're going to bring your shoulder blades a little bit more together. Hands down by your feet. On an inhale, you're going to lift. Now, some people need a little bit of support here. So you can support with your hands if it's available to you. And then you're going to bring your elbows in a little closer. You don't wanna, you want your hands just below this curvature point in your low back. Now if you're okay here, you can just bring your hands down to the ground. And if you want a little more, bring your hands together and bring your shoulders down and under you. Inhale and lengthen. And you're going to ground through your feet. You're gonna activate your quads. You don't want your low back taking everything. Create some length in your neck. You want to be able to breathe here. Activate your glutes, but not to where you're crunching completely. You want to have your legs active, a little bit of your glutes. And exhale, release. There are a couple other ways to work this pose, especially if you need a little bit of help and you can't do things without any props, which is perfectly fine. Get the props. You want to be able to practice. You don't want to hold yourself back just because you feel like you need to be at a certain level or you need to look a certain way. Your practice is your practice and you will progress but if you don't give yourself the tools to progress, you're pretty much just holding yourself back. And there's no reason you should be holding yourself back if it's just to outwardly look good for who? Everybody was a beginner at one point. So be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, just focus on where you are right now and see where you can go and then go beyond a little bit further than that little point that you find of discomfort. You never want it to be pain. If it's sharp, stop. But discomfort is okay. You want the discomfort, breathe through that. But if it becomes sharp and painful, don't do it. But please, please use props. Props are very, very helpful. I have a block here. Blocks are not very, very, very useful. So, here, hands grazing the feet. Maybe 
this is pretty much all you can do. And some people are here. And that's still a bend. Or maybe you work up to a little higher. You just keep flipping the block around to suit your needs of where you are today. And then you can also place it up high. Don't place it where you're just hinging. You want it just a little bit below, just down by where your sacrum is. Now another way to open up through the thoracic portion of your spine is by using the block also. This will go up in this upper portion that tends to curve forward. And you can lay here like this. And it'll be a great shoulder stretch and upper body stretch right here. You can just relax here for a minute, two minutes, as long as your body needs. Another way to work bridge pose is by using your straps. Let's say your legs tend to splay out. You can always kind of just corral your feet. Just tie them up. Um, that way your feet are hip distance apart and they're not moving around. Or say you have it on your knees in this area, you can always just tie this up so that when you go up, they are in that position. You can also get those uh, workout bands that people use a lot um, that also keep your knees in alignment. That way you're not going like this and moving your legs all over the place while you're going into these back bends. But as you work through this pose, there's different ways to strengthen your legs and continue working on it so that you could advance through it. So when you're done on your back, and you come up, bring your shoulders. Say this has become comfortable for you. You are working through, you're pushing through your heels, you're pushing through your feet, and you wanna take it a little further. So you can always raise one leg. You can stretch that leg out. You can also start doing little pulses. You'll start feeling a lot on your quads and this back area. You're going to need those muscles if you want to get into bigger and deeper back bends like wheel or bow pose. Just one at a time, however shape you like to do. You start firing up those quads, you start feeling it right away. After your back bends, you want to come back down. And before you do a counter pose, you want to just lay here for a moment. So you don't want to automatically just hinge the other way. Just give your body a moment. find itself again in neutral. But a great and simple counter pose for this practice is Balasana, which is child's pose. So there are different ways to take child's pose. 
you could have them with your knees just slightly apart and then you reach forward head down you can both take your knees as wide as your mat or even further out it's really up to you but this is nice restorative pose whenever you need a little break you can always come back to it anytime it's just a nice little break for you to just come back inside to yourself and breathe deeply. So our next pose is Ustrasana, which is camel pose. And maybe you'll start to notice, but as we go back, say for the full expression of the pose, this is just the vertical version of bridge pose. But now you're having a little bit of gravity working against you or for you, however you'd like to see it. So, and you're going to start experiencing more of that inversion part. You're not gonna be able to see where your hands are going. So a little bit of that, that those emotions start coming up. Some people start feeling fear, some people are excited. You need to start opening up your front body even more. These hip flexors are going to be a huge factor as well as opening up through the belly and through the chest in order to get back there. It's not going to feel the same as when you did bridge pose, but they are the same visually. All right. So to get into Ustrasana, you're going to have your knees keep hip distance apart. You can place your hands on your lower back. Um, more between your lower back and this, your bottom. So like if you had pockets right here, pretend you put your hands in your pockets. And then you're just going to bring your shoulders back. And hang out right here. This is where some people are, and that's okay. Some people, this might be a lot. But if you'd like to explore a little more, go in a little deeper. Maybe you'll want to reach for an ankle and reach for another ankle. Now you want to inhale and lengthen. So you want to feel through the upper back. You're not dumping everything into the low spine. Then remember to breathe. get out you're going to come back the same way you go up the same way you came in you're gonna put your hands on your lower back protect your lower back and raise yourself up so some people can't get there but they want to feel what it's like to not have their hands on their lower back so a great way to do this or with blocks you're gonna put them on either side of your feet you're going to come up. You have the blocks on like their highest position. So you're going to place your hands on your lower back. With every inhale, you want to be opening up and lengthening. You want to find length before you find depth. So with that length, you start opening up through the top portion, the thoracic portion of your spine and then you're going to find more of that curve. So inhale, lengthen. Inhale, lengthen. Now, if you want to do the blocks, start reaching behind and reaching behind. Good. 
And if you feel comfortable, drop your head back. Inhale, lengthen. And to come back out of this, the same way you came in, one at a time. Now don't rush through anything. Please don't rush through anything. Take everything in your own pace. If you need to pause the video and start revisiting some of this, just go into it slowly. Everything needs to be done slowly. Don't rush. If you do not want to get hurt, if you get hurt, you can't come back. It's, it, you'll, it'll take longer for you to get back to where you were. You just want to keep working on it little by little. No injuries is the goal. Now with the straws and not camel pose, you can also use a strap like you did with the other one. Or if your knees are coming apart too much, you can tie your strap around your knees to get them stable. And then from here, you would go back. That way you're not splaying out and creating more stress on the lower back. So once you get comfortable with this pose, there's some other variations that maybe you've seen her on Instagram that you want to try out. That's really up to you. Um, just the main thing to look out for is protect your knees. So a lot of these, like with this, some people don't feel comfortable with even just being on the mat. I have a bit of carpet here, which does help my knees. But if I were to have done a lot of this on the other floor that I was using before, it may hurt I'm not exactly I don't, I don't remember but you can always use something to just protect your knees here you could put a small little blanket or maybe you have some pads that you could put on and that way you won't feel that that achiness on your knees from the pressure of the floor now some of the other variations that are around for Ustrasana are things like bringing up one you bring up the one foot now with that one because there's such a small pressure that one I would definitely feel on the other floor so I try not to do that too much unless I have some kind of protective thing it looks great in pictures but we always want to be careful with our body because this is what we are going to be caring for the rest of our lives and there is no picture worth the injury so other ones are things such as extending the leg out um, a lot of this is just for pictures. It, you wouldn't really see it in yoga class, but if you wanna play around with different variations and you have a strong strasana already, then go ahead, but always be mindful of your body and what it's able to do and push your limits a little, some, but not to the extent where you're going to hurt yourself. So you drop back. So the third pose in the series is Dhanurasana, bow pose. So like the other two, you'll notice that it is pretty much the same pose, but we're just turning. So we started on our backs and then we got on our knees and now we're going to be on our bellies. And you'll notice they're all the same shapes. It's just the way gravity is affecting us. Now with Dhanurasana, we can do different variations in which our 
different areas of our body are going to open up in different ways. So each pose kind of works, builds upon each other to build up to Dhanurasana. Dhanurasana is really going to work on opening up those shoulders a lot because you're going to have the weight of your feet trying to pull on the shoulders to open up that chest a lot. So to get into Dhanurasana, you're going to be on your belly. Now, when you're ready, take your head back down. You're gonna bend your knees, both of them. You're going to take your hands and grab onto your ankles. And on an inhale, you're gonna lift your upper body and you're going to basically like kick away with your feet. So it pulls your upper body. So inhale. And every inhale lengthen. You'll start feeling it in your quads. You'll feel your shoulder stretch, your chest stretch. Now, some people can't get into the, this outside edge of the foot hold, and it's easier for them to get into the inner edge. See if that works for you. And some people can't reach at all. So we are going to use a strap. Strap is amazing. Strap is our friend. So to tie it, if you want to tie it the way I just did, you would get the strap and put it underneath your legs. Keep your feet hip distance apart. From here, you're going to take the strap and bring it in. That way you have two kind of handles. Yeah, handle. So that you can hold on to. And then you don't want to lose the suit to try to hold on to that as you turn over. And then from here, inhale, bend your knees, inhale, and you're going to pull. So And whenever you inhale, lengthen. You don't want to dump into the lower back. Now if you need a little bit more help than that, you can always use a bolster or some kind of blanket. Uh, Cause some people feel a lot of pressure in their pelvis when they're on the floor and it makes it uncomfortable. So you can use a bolster and it'll start lifting you up a little bit to give you a bit of that upward movement and relieves that pelvic pressure. So you can just start here, grab your ankles, inhale, and you'll get some assistance in coming up. If you need a strap, feel free to use a strap as well. But here, your legs aren't working as much. You have a lot of the chest opening, shoulders opening. Even this right here starts stretching out. That might be still a little too much for some people because a lot of the gravity thing happening. So you can be on your side, 
and just bend your knees and you can work on it one set at a time so you just grab one leg and you could use the other arm to extend out and rest your head and you just pull on this foot you're going to grab onto this foot your foot is going to kick out and i'll start opening up through the upper back inhale and go deeper lengthen before depth that single leg option is also available while you're on your belly you can inhale so you will start so that single leg option is also available here you can just Bend one leg, grab onto that ankle, inhale, and come up, bring that arm out. Or if you need a support, you can put it down like you, as if in Sphinx. Inhale, lengthen through the upper spine. And then come back down. And don't forget to do the other side. Extend your arm or have it down for support. And you just exhale as you come down. If you're looking for some different variations because you've got that Danyarasana down, there are different ways you can go about it. Um, some are just Instagram pictures, some are, you know, just different variations in the way you place your hands. So we'll go through maybe a couple of them. And if you find any more that you like, let me know, tag me. That way I can see what you got. All right, so. One variation would be when you come here. So here we have our hands on the outside. Now, there's an option to flip your grip. So from here, you would flip your hand so your palm's facing out, and then you grab your foot like, like a lobster claw from the outside. And then you're going to rotate your elbows as they point up. You're going to bring your knees together. Inhale, lengthen. You can also just bring your feet down to your shoulders. Play around with this a little bit. Another one that I had seen is you have this foot, let's say for example, your left foot bends like pretty far, almost like a, if you were going to do like a frog type pose. So left bend, right hand reaches under, grabs onto that foot. Then the, so now you're kind of like in a mini twist here. The left hand will reach over for the right foot. On your inhale, you lift. And now you have one of these poses that you might've seen around on the internet. And then you come back to center.
So the last pose we'll be looking at in this series is Urva Dhanurasana, also known as wheel pose. So Dhanurasana, also upward bow pose. In the fullest form, you would be grabbing your feet. But for the most pose, we're just gonna do the wheel pose that we are all familiar with. Now, a lot of people will not be able to do this pose. Um, a lot of it is having a open front body. You really need to have your shoulders very stretched out, your chest open, abdominals open, your hip flexors open, your quads need to be strong, and you have need some strength in your back. It can be a process to get there. The most important part is to always listen to what your body's saying. Now, some people anatomically won't be able to move their arms straight behind them because they have a bone that will stick out. So it will stop their upward arm movement sometimes even this far some people have greater mobility than others and a lot of it has to do with bone structure so if that's not you that's okay there's so many ways so many benefits that you still get from doing a lot of these back bends even if you don't get into what is called the full expression you have your full expression of the pose and that's what matters so We've already warmed up our bodies. We've done a lot of the kind of like precursors to wheel pose. I uh, just work on a lot of the bridge pose and camel pose, working on those back bends and even upward facing dog and all those just to open up that thoracic area will really help you get into wheel. So with wheel, there's so many different ways to work with it. Uh, it really depends on your comfort level. So some people are able to work on a wall where they don't have that claustrophobia feel. It is very helpful. So like I was explaining before, you can do the puppy dog pose on the wall. So you're going to put your hands up on a wall and then you're going to just stretch. And you're going to feel that openness in the top portion of your spine. You're going to feel your shoulders opening up. So that's going to give you a lot of that openness that you need. So you don't have to absolutely be upside down to get that practice in. Now, Another thing you can be doing also is just working on your quads. So a lot of that is going to be when you're in bridge pose, so getting that one leg up at a time or even both. You could do just kind of like pulses while you're in bridge pose. It will get your quads working very well and you're going to need that in order to stay up in a wheel. But if you're ready to work on wheel, You'll be on your back. Your fingers be grazing your feet. And just kind of situate your feet, hit this to this apart. And bring your hands up, bend and then place your hands by your shoulders and your elbows will be pointed up. You wanna practice keeping your elbows in. So maybe you wanna sit here and just have that feeling of moving your elbows inward. And when you're ready, you can work on getting to a half wheel. So to do that is you're going to very carefully start pressing through your feet. You're gonna lift your hips 
and then you're gonna lift and set yourself on the crown of your head. Now you're not going to put all your weight on the crown of your head, you're going to press through your hands. And you're not gonna dump all the weight on your wrist. You're going to put a lot of weight on to your fingers all the way through your hands. And you're going to press through your feet. So you're gonna have a lot of engagement here everywhere. And remember to breathe. And if this is a lot, tuck your chin in and come back down slowly. Now some people might be just there and that might be a lot and you want to keep practicing over and over until you start feeling this strengthen up a bit more. But do not keep the weight on your head. You want to distribute the weight throughout your body. Now, if you are ready, you want to go a little further, hands by your shoulders, elbows up, make sure you're not on your hair, because that'll keep you from coming up. <laughs> Alright, so from here, you're going to press up, you're going to stay, and then you're going to just keep pressing, 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 weight through your fingers, weight through your feet, on every inhale, you're going to lengthen through the upper spine, you can stay right here, or if you want, you can open up the upper spine some more, you just start trying to straighten out your knees, Out of this, you just tuck your chin. You want to slowly come to the upper part of your back and then slowly bring the rest of it down. Cool. Back bends can bring out a lot of emotions. Just remember to breathe and start cleansing through it. You want to start using your breath, returning to the breath to work through those emotions. It, can, it just brings up so much energy that you want to be able to have the strength to know when you need to let it go and come out of the pose in time so you have enough energy to come out of it safely. Don't get caught up in everything that's going on. You need to bring yourself to the breath and know that you need to come out of things safely, have enough energy, so it's being very, very mindful about everything that's happening within your body. So if you want to work on different variations, you can, once you're ready and you feel comfortable and you can hold the pose for a while, you can get into it. Hands by shoulders, try to keep the elbows in, inhale, now some other ones you could bring your feet closer and be on your tiptoes, remember you want to keep that upper back open. You can be on your tiptoes, you don't have to. You keep it flat, you bring one knee up. You can extend that leg. You can bring it to your head. Just carefully move and explore. You can also work on bringing an arm out. It's all about what you're comfortable with, what you wanna Explore and learn about what your body is able to do while you're here. But if you want to hold this pose for a long period of time, sometimes it is easier when you start switching how much 
weight is being distributed to the different limbs. Remember to press through the different fingers because you don't want to dump the weight on your wrist. And whenever you're ready, tuck your chin. You come down to your upper back. And you can extend your legs. And find a neutral right here. Now, some people need help with wheel pose. So one of the things you can do is the knees. Knees tend to open up and do all kinds of things. So you take the strap, wrap the knees. Maybe you get that, the, the strap, the workout bands that you have around the knees. And that will keep your legs from splaying out. Because when you start splaying out, it does tend to hurt the lower back a little more. So you can bring this. It'll keep your knees in place. The other option you have too is you do that with your with the keeping your arms together, but it's, it's, it's hard to tie on your um, arms. So you just have to measure out how far it is, hold on to that area, and then tie it and then wrap your arms in. Or you could use that workout band around and it'll keep your elbows more in line to where it's supposed to be instead of it opening up. Now, remember to just, we wanna rest find a neutral position, bring your knees to your chest, and you can begin to rock. You have a windshield wipe the legs. bands can be electrifying but we need to reset the body we cannot be living in this electrified state at all times now a great way to bring ourselves to neutral after a back bend series is to do some twists if you noticed that we were doing a lot of these rotating back and forth, the windshield wipers. And here we'll do our supine twists. So you're gonna bring your right knee up to your chest. You're gonna bring it over to the left side. Extend your arms out to a T. Look over to the right. Try to keep your shoulder down to the ground. Just close your eyes right here. Take some deep, deep breaths. Anything that came up, just wash it away.
Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, extend that leg. Inhale, bring your left knee up to your chest and bring that knee over to the right and look over to the left. Try to keep your shoulders down as best as you can. That's all we can do is our best. A deep belly breath. And a deep cleansing breath out. back to center. Exhale, extend that leg out. Now bring your arms down by your side, spread your feet wider than your mat. Just prepare for Savasana. Well deserves the last month. Ready for reset. And sink in. Let go of that feeling in your toes. Let a wave of relaxation come over them. Let that wave travel up your legs and allow it to relax your thighs, your hips. belly, your shoulders, relax those fingertips, make your neck soft, and loosen your jaw. Relax your eyes. Relax your forehead. And just sink deeper into the mat. Allow gravity to pull you down. Deep inhale. And exhale, sink deeper into Savasana. Start making little movements with your toes. Movements with your fingers. Start swaying your feet back and forth. Inhale, stretch 
your hands up overhead. Take a full body stretch with your eyes closed. Roll over to your right side. In fetal position. Taking in everything that you got from this practice. Allowing it to transform you. Press through the ground and sit yourself up into an easy pose or lotus pose, whatever comes easy to you. Take a few deep breaths here. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Your hands to heart center. Thank you for being here with me today and taking part of this workshop. I hope that you learned something new. Please leave in the comments below if you learned something or if you learned something about yourself, or if there was something that you wanna learn more about. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can leave something in the comments or contact me on Instagram at Summer Perez. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Namaste.